In this episode, we're going to be tackling the Grand Republic of Rome, which started in 509 BC. And we're going to take a look at how Rome's power extended through Italy and beyond, but also what did Rome build? What material evidence can we still find in the city of Rome today? From monuments, to physical spaces, to artifacts. Let's start in 509 BC. Rome was officially a republic. They had ejected the kings, and we've discussed regal Rome earlier in a previous video. Now Rome has to distinguish itself, has to create its own identity, as a city now ruled by its members, its citizens. Some of the earliest Republican temples are visible in the Forum, today in their imperial iterations. But we can take these temples back to the 5th century BC, the Temple of the Castors and the Temple of Saturn. We can go to the Campus Martius. We can see the imperial remains of the Sipta, the enclosure where Roman citizens voted. It was all part of a larger complex known as the Villa Publica, and it was first constructed in 435. A big moment in early Republican Rome is its conquest of the southernmost Etruscan city in 396, the conquest of the city of Vei, and this began a series of battles with the Etruscans. Now, unfortunately for Rome, it was heavily, brutally sacked by the Gauls in 390, and as a response, they rebuilt in a more substantial form the Servian Wall of the 6th century. So most of what we see today visible, for example, here at by the Termini train station, is this Servian Wall dating to after the sack of 390, And traditionally, we're looking at a date of 378 BC. Much of the material is made of tuff, of grotta scura, which comes from the city of Vei. And Vei had to be conquered for the Romans to extract this particular tuff. Besides the Servian Wall, what can we see archaeologically in the city of Rome? We have to turn to the archaeological site of Santa Mabono, where we can see a very large platform was constructed in the 4th century BC. And we can see actually a dedication here, beautifully carved, in tuff. But there isn't that much to see of the city in this period that's well preserved. We have to think, though, that a lot was happening because Rome was now dominating the Latin peoples. And one of the key victories was over Antium in 338 BC, and famously, there was erected in the Roman Forum the Columna Rostrata, the column decorated with the rostra of the defeated ships of Antium, but also the beaks, the rostra of the ships were used to decorate the speaker's platform, forever giving it the name Rostra. Thereafter, Rome embarked on a series of Samnite Wars, the first and second and third Samnite Wars, from 343 BC all the way to 290. And this was fought over a huge portion of central Italy. And the way that the Romans marked their victories and kept a hold of the territory that was won was with the construction of the Via Appia that ultimately extended all the way to the Brindisi. You can check out our eight-part video series that traces the path of the Via Appia from Rome into Latin territory, into Campania, cities like Capua and Beneventum, and down to Taranto and Brindisi. So this was a way that Rome was taking on its big rivals in the south, taking over cities like Capua that ultimately becomes a magnificent Roman-era city. So the Via Appia construction led Rome further south. And one of the great battles was against Taranto. And the Tarentines, a very powerful kingdom at the base of Italy, called on a Greek savior, Pyrrhus, who 
who was a relative of Alexander the Great himself, to come from mainland Greece over to southern Italy to help defend the city of Taranto from the growing power of Rome. And as a result, Rome won that war and thereafter embarked on an even greater emprise going against Carthage. The Punic Wars were fought from 264 to 241, and we have two temples that were constructed as victory temples visible today in the Forum Holatorium area, now incorporated into the Church of San Nicola in Carcere. The Second Punic War was fought from 218 to 201 BC, and as a result of these two wars, Rome won first Sicily, Sardinia and Corsica, and then after the Second Punic War, Rome won portions of Spain. In the course of the Punic Wars, Rome became drawn into conflicts over in mainland Greece, and therein began the Macedonian Wars from 214 to 148 BC. This was a series of conflicts that the Republic fought against various Greek kingdoms. As a result, Rome would be magnificently built by a lot of the victorious generals. For example, the Temple of Hercules Musarum, which we can see on the former Urbis plan of the Severan era, it was built by the consul Marcus Fulvius Nobilior after he conquered the Macedonian city of Ambracia in 189 BC. The Porticus Octavia, also known as the Portico of Octavius, was built by Gnaeus Octavius in 168 BC to commemorate his capture of Perseus of Macedonia during the Third Macedonian War. And Metellus Macedonicus put in his portico, the Porticus Metelli, which later became rebuilt as the Porticus of Octavia that we see preserved in the Jewish ghetto in Rome. It had placed in it a bronze equestrian group of Alexander the Great and his companions at the Battle of Granicus. And within that portico complex, they were built Rome's first marble temples of Juno and Jupiter. And as a result of these Macedonian Wars, you had the conquest and destruction of Corinth. And in the same year, 146, you had the end of the Third Punic War which went from 149 to 146 BC, the destruction of these two primary cities, Corinth and Carthage, led to an outpouring of wealth and success in the city of Rome that it had never seen before. And the second century BC was marked with many firsts, the first stone bridge, the first paved roads in the city, the first basilicas, the covered courthouses in the Roman form. And you're going to also have new magnificent aqueducts on an unheard of scale. In particular, the Aqua Marcia, which we could admire today in the Park of the Aqueducts, built with the spoils of war from the destruction of Carthage. This was setting a new tone in the city of Rome that was growing in scale by leaps and bounds and needed more fresh water. The success of the Roman Republic led to the rise of the individuals. Here is the tomb of the Scipios on the Via Appia at its beginning. Six generations of Scipios were buried here, including Lucius Cornelius Scipio Barbatus, who was consul in 298 BC. Still here we see a tomb dug out of tuff and a tomb constructed of tuff. It was not yet a city of marble. And there are so many votive offerings that underlines the religiosity of the Romans, votive offerings to Minerva Medica and other deities. And of course, when they celebrate their victories and they're building artifacts, oftentimes it was still tuff or in ceramics here is a barbarian mother, and the Tuf statue was stuccoed over. We have brilliant colors preserved from decoration of the 3rd century Largo Argentina temples. It is an indication 
of just how successful the Romans were. Essentially, they were building about one celebratory temple every two years in the third century alone. Such success, though, would create a crisis. And we'll discuss that in the next video in the series on late Republican Rome. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please join us. Sign up for our newsletter for live lectures from Rome.